I'm Willow Belden, and you're listening to Oral Histories from the University of Wyoming Geological Museum. When you walk into the museum, you see two dinosaur skeletons. As you probably know, the smaller of the two is called Big Al. Al because it's an Allosaurus, and Big because the skeleton was a major discovery, not just for Wyoming, but for the world. But the skeleton on display at UW isn't the real thing. It's a replica. On this segment, we share the story of why that is. It's a story about surprising discoveries and a bold decision to set aside state desires to serve a national interest. But let's go back to the beginning. It was 1991, and a man named Brent Breithaupt was in charge of the museum. One day, he gets a call from the Bureau of Land Management, or BLM. They tell him there's been a big discovery, a dinosaur skeleton up in the Bighorn Basin, and they ask him to come up and see it. I'll have to admit I was a little bit um, incredulous at first. Uh, in most cases, when I'm called to look at a fossil or a spectacular fossil, it turns out to be something pretty insignificant. So when they contacted me, I you know, kind of rolled my eyes and said, OK, well, you know, we'll, I'll see if I can make the time to get up there and take a look at it. But then the BLM did something they had never done before. They said, well, we'll fly you up there. That's when Brent knew this wasn't an insignificant discovery. And sure enough, when he got up to the site, he realized this was a big deal. This was the most complete Allosaurus skeleton ever found, and it was fairly intact. In other words, the pieces were all together, not strewn around all over the place. This was major. And according to Professor Emeritus Don Boyd, it drew a lot of attention. Crowds of people gathered to watch the excavation and so on. It got a lot of publicity. And the question then became, uh, whose is this? Whose is this? The skeleton had been discovered by a Swiss team. But although they thought they were on private land, they were actually just over the line on an area managed by the BLM. In other words, they'd found this skeleton on federal public land. So that means that it's a public fossil. That means that it can't be collected for sale. It can't be collected and transported overseas. It had to stay in the United States for the people of the U.S. In other words, the Swiss team who had discovered it could not lay claim to it. It was U.S. property. The BLM brought in several paleontologists, including Breithaupt, and they started debating what to do with the skeleton. It was decided that it would go to one of two museums, either the University of Wyoming or the Museum of the Rockies in Montana. Since it was found in Wyoming, there was a lot of interest in keeping it here. But it's not quite so simple. Excavating dinosaur skeletons and then preparing them, in other words, chipping away the rock from the bones, repairing the cracks, etc., all of that is a big job. It's something that can take years and cost tens of thousands of dollars. It's not just a matter of like, oh, we just pull it out of the ground and it's ready to go. Brent felt the UW Geological Museum simply wasn't up to the task of dealing with this specimen. You know, I'm the only permanent staff member for the museum, and uh, I don't know how we could possibly do justice to collecting this and preparing it and, and doing the studies that need to be done on it. I mean, so we need to make the responsible decision of what is best for this fossil. Because fossils on, on federal public land belong to the people of the U.S. They don't belong to the people of just of the state of Wyoming. They belong to the people of Wyoming, of New York, of Hawaii, of Florida, of Texas, all the states. And so even though this skeleton was offered to UW, Breithaupt declined to take it. Instead, it would go to Montana. Don Boyd says a lot of people were upset by the decision, everyone from lawmakers to university officials. Much criticism came to Brent for not having insisted that the skeleton come here. In fact, I think at some one of our committee meetings, one of the higher administrators uh, made a comment that uh, that UW should never let a Wyoming specimen go out of the state. But Boyd says some of that criticism was misplaced. I felt uh, sympathetic to Brent's decision on the grounds that uh, here he had no help. Who's going to <laughs> uh, do all the man hours of work that would be required to get the skeleton properly 
prepared and uh, exhibited. In contrast to UW, the Museum of the Rockies had the staff and the money to deal with the dinosaur properly. And to sweeten the deal, they agreed to make a cast of the skeleton for UW, a replica. That replica is now on display at the museum in Laramie. It's not the real thing, but Breithaupt says that's not really so bad. For the most part, except for a few bones, most of the material on display anywhere, uh, even up in Montana, are casts. The real bones get stored behind the scenes for research purposes. In the end, Breithaupt says letting the real big owl go was the right thing to do. Sure, it would have been nice to keep a Wyoming fossil in Wyoming. But in the end, you have to do what's best for the fossil, for the public, and for researchers. Thank you.